So we're gonna talk about game spaces. Yes. And gameplay in those game spaces. What, what's, a, what's a game space? In Dreamfall chapters, a, a game space is, is an area where uh, the player can uh, explore uh, at his or her own pace. Uh, at leisure? Yes. I mean, it's, 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 we think it's incredibly important that the player is able or is allowed to explore the game at his or her own pace and not having that stressful feeling of always have to like reach the next uh, checkpoint. There's, the no, there's no timer that counts down and says you have to progress in the story. No, and, uh, and I, I think that the player should be allowed to, to do that sort of exploration if, if, if they want to. Hmm. Uh, we keep saying that we should, uh, should reward curiosity. Uh, and I think that's, uh, I like that expression. Yeah. If, if the player chooses to go off the beaten path, then... Uh, there should be something there to uh, Something to, to explore, find, yeah. something to discover, and it might be completely irrelevant to what you're doing right now, mm. but it might be relevant. Mm. Uh, and, and, and it, and it does uh, add depth to the world and the story regardless, even if it feels like not part of the, the puzzle you're working on. Absolutely. Or the, yeah. Just like in, in, in real life, it's... There are very few places you go to where there are nothing. There are always some... There are something. Something to explore, somebody to talk to. Some secrets to discover. Always. Yes. <laughs> well, so what specifically this means in Dreamfall Chapters is, you know, you, there is a linear narrative, of course. It's a linear story. Yes. But at certain points, uh, the, the game opens up and it, it slows down and it lets you decide when to progress. Yeah, we will communicate to the player that that um, the next point in the story is somewhere, and that should be very clear. But it, we should also communicate that at this point, you're free to do whatever you want, tons of things to explore. When you're ready to progress, then mm. then you know what you need to do in order to progress the story. Mm. But that shouldn't it shouldn't rush the player. Yeah, we should uh, we should tell them that you have all the time in the world. Relax, Relax, enjoy the game, yeah. enjoy the world. Enjoy, enjoy the world, it. immerse in the world. But sometimes it's also that maybe the narrative requires several things to be accomplished and then we're giving players some non-linearity. They can do those tasks, those, those missions in any order. Absolutely. <clears throat> it's, uh, I think that's, that can be a quite interesting experience when we say that we want, to, we want the player to reach a goal but there are many ways to get there and might be several ways to get there that, and you need to sort of complete many different things in order to get there. Mm. Um, and I think giving that choice to the player can be, can be quite interesting because mm. the player can focus on what he or she likes to do. Uh, and then you, you fulfill certain criteria, and then you're then allowed you can to move progress. on. Yeah. We're going to be looking at one particular scene inside one space, Europolis. Yes. Europolis consists of uh, uh, one bigger space and then other locations attached to that and we'll talk a little bit more about that when we see the footage but here Zoe has to basically uh, in order to accomplish something do a number of tasks in order to progress she's in investigating something at uh, one of these dream factories um, but it's closed and she needs to, to find her way in all right so here we are in Europolis it's a huge space uh, and Zoe has gotten lots of different clues, but we've chosen to follow one particular path. Um, it's a clue about the Chaudhry Industries and one of their dream factories. So we're here now and approaching the door. As we're trying to, to open it, we've told that it's locked, but you can hear voices from the inside. So apparently somebody is here. They just don't want you inside. So how can we get in? Well, it's time to look at, look at the scene. What do we have to work with here? First of all, there's a parked car here, with the lights on. Uh, that triggers my suspicion. Uh, if we look inside the window, uh, we're told that the windows are tainted and the door is locked. So, what else do we have here? We have a huge spider mech that's being repaired by these maintenance, maintenance robots. Okay, that seems uh, somewhat unusual, but uh, what else? We have a vending machine that I can interact with. So, if I just take a step back here and, and, and look at all these elements, remember that everything in, uh, in this world is connected through, through the wire, through this network. And I can tell you that everything the player needs to get into Seshadri Industries is right here. The player just needs to figure out how. 
I'm not gonna tell you that, but uh, good luck. So Europolis is a huge city, and this tiny corner that we've looked at now is just a fraction of it. It's important to remember that not everything is a puzzle in this game. You can walk around in streets, meet interesting characters, pick up uh, new pieces of lore, and just sort of exploring and experiencing the city. Not everything is about the puzzles. And when you do, the best way of getting around town is of course the metro. Oh, hi there. My name is Dag Sheva and I'm one of the writers on uh, Dreamfall Chapters. Um, you caught me at a very uh, good time here. Uh, I'm just uh, now sitting down to start uh, writing the dialogue for the second playable character uh, of the game. His name is Kion Albane. of the faith, a holy assassin uh, in Dreamfall. At the end of that game, he was uh, arrested by his own people for acts of treason, and then he was sent to Mercuria, to Friar's Keep, a prison there, uh, to await execution. And that's where we join him in Dreamfall Chapters. <laughs> <laughs> 